just cut a chunk off this worm. He's not very lively, is he? There we go. To a fish, steak on a hook. <laughs> What a great time to be fishing. Absolutely gorgeous out here. Now the technique to cast this is with an up underhand whipping motion and you let go. And once I let go, I'm gonna point the front of my kit towards the direction that my line is going. Standing on a log hanging over. Here we go. There, I reached the end of my cordage. Now, I'm going to reel in until it gets tight. Look at this. I'm then going to pull back my hand until I feel tension. That way I can feel if a fish is biting and pulling my line. When it does, I yank and set the hook. Now I'm going to be quiet because I'm fishing. That bait was not moving at all. That was a dead worm. So we'll see. Maybe I'll dig through and see what else I've got. Try to find one a bit more lively. This doesn't work out. And now we're fishing, you know? Sometimes it's two minutes, sometimes it's ten minutes. We'll see what happens. Before I swap it, I'll try again. I'm going to cast a little closer towards the edge. That's a money spot. Give one more minute and swap out my bait. All right, this guy's got some movement in him. Obviously, if I was really living out here, I needed bait. That frog would make super good bait. But I've got these worms. I'll use them. All right, let's try again. take long usually to get a bite usually within 20 seconds hey one thing it's biting is the mosquitoes <laughs> think I'm gonna throw out one more cast that's just how I am you know I have a hard time walking away from fishing until I catch something. Stubborn like that. I usually catch fish every time I come to this hole. So it is what it is.
I'm gonna go ahead and cast one more time. Give it another minute before I head in. You know, every time I've pulled in my hook, it's always covered in moss. So is my rock. It's possible that the pond is too shallow. Or rather, it's possible that the moss and mud is too deep in that area. And my hook is getting buried. So what you can do if that happens is change the height of the hook. So I'm just going to make another loop higher up. I'm going to add another foot, foot and a half to that. Make another tie out spot. Another anchor for my hook. All right? Now I'm just going to take the hook off of this spot. Take the bait off. Let's put it right there for now. So I'll take the hook off and I'll put it in the new location. So I just changed the height. So maybe my hook is too deep. Maybe that's why I'm not getting any bites. These are the changes you make in your tackle as you go. Again, I'm going to put another overhand on my leader that I created to stop it from getting too small under tension. I'm going to rebate my hook in its new location. And we'll try one more time. So now I'm looking at about three feet or so from the bottom from my weight. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, Cass. Yes, here we go. That's a good one. Caught a catfish. Oh, it's a chunk all over them. Oh, he just fell off my hook, right as I was taking him off. Madness. He can give me a chance to clean him up. He's taking the moss off his face. And he freaked. Right there, he's still down there. Let's see if I can get him out. What's up, guy? What are you doing down there? Are you gonna make it back to the water or what?
jumped it off my hook, he did. There he is. Come on, dude, get back to the water. There you go. There he goes. <laughs> well, that was eventful. Right on. Crazy catfish. He was just completely covered in, uh, in a moss and just plant matter from being at the bottom and dragging through the weeds when he was fighting me. So I just was taking him off, cleaning that up around his face, holding the line, and I was slowly working my way down to get to the hook so I could hold the hook. It was on his lip. And as I pulled down on the moss at his face, he let go. He like freaked out and he ripped off. So he got himself off the hook when I was pulling the, uh, the moss off his face. I was gonna hold him up for you guys so he looked really nice, right? But uh, it is what it is. He got himself off and then after that I wasn't gonna mess with him. You know, I'm not gonna try to pick him up and hold him nice and you know, make it look cute. But I figured I would just make sure that he made it back to the water because I'm not gonna let him die. You know, that's crazy, right? <clears throat> I was going to throw him back in the water anyways. So, um, yeah, pretty much it. Fell off my hook. He was just laying in the mud at my feet. I mean, they love mud, so he was like, okay, this mud's kind of wet. I think I like this. And he was facing the wrong way. He wasn't going to make it back in. So, before I leave, you know, before I left tonight, I'm still here right now. I want to make sure that he was back in the water. He was safe. That's why I just turned him around, faced him towards the water, and I tried to get some of that um, footage for you guys and just make sure that he made it back in, and he did. He went right back in the water, no problem, so no worries there. But yeah, so there's the fishing kit. It's pretty much just a stick with some line on it and a rock tied to the end with a hook. Super simple kit. You know, it absolutely catches fish. I've caught tons of fish on a rig like that. Um, the first time I ever seen that, my grandfather was using it. My grandfather preferred to fish that way when he wasn't in tournaments. When he was in tournaments, he had his you know crazy reel and his rig, and it was like a Ted Williams model and, and all that, right? But um, and he won tournaments. He, he's, he's, he was a good fisherman. When he was just fishing, like with me and my dad, and we we're just you know grandfather his son and his grandson fishing hanging out type of thing uh, we did pretty often when I was a kid when he was still alive of course um, yeah he always had his throw kit and I have that that uh, that kit still it's just a little piece of wood you know this little aged piece of wood looks like a relic and it has uh, has butcher's twine tied around it as the cordage. And it has a monster, I mean monster of a of a lead weight on the bottom. It's huge, the biggest lead weight I've ever seen. Yeah, so my dad gave me that kit to hold on to. And he also gave me his throw line kit as well, which is identical. The only difference is that my grandfather had a bell on his. He had a bell. So he used to rig it up, he used to throw his line in and uh, sit down. And Ty used to bring a folding chair with him and tie his line to his chair and then hook the bell up to it. And he'd sit and have his drink of coffee. And all of a sudden, this bell would start shaking. Ding, 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 ding. It'd start ringing. And he would look at me and he would just like be still. Of course, I'm still playing around, you know, with my hook and my tackle and everything else, trying to get everything together. His line's already in the water, he already has a bite. And then he would look at me and ding, 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 ding. He'd yank on it, set the hook. He'd smile. He'd be bringing in that fish, you know. He used to say all the time, you know, boy, you can't catch a fish unless he hooks in the water. And I'd be like playing around with my kit. I'm like, oh, Papa won again. <laughs> he always won. First honors, man. Always caught fish first. But I thank him for that. Because now I have a throw line kit based on his. And... My throw line kit, when I'm done with it, that's going to go down again. So it'll be my grandfather's, my father's, and mine. We'll all be together in the same spot. So.
So pretty cool stuff. So I thank him for that, for teaching me how to fish like this. You know, fish the old way. Okay, so here's my kit. Here's the hook. I just grabbed that cat. No more bait, so at least he got a meal out of it, which is cool. I'm glad to have fed him. My rock at the end. That's it. Really simple kit. I just wrap it around. When I get to the hook, I just lay it down flat and wrap the line over it. Right over the shank and then right over the barb. Do that a couple times. That's it. Now my kit's all compact, ready to go. My hook is safe. It's not going to get caught in anything. It's tied down. It's a good little kit. Alright, so right on. This is Mitch with the Native Survival School. Here's my fishing kit. Real quick throw line kit. Be sure to check out our website, nativesurvival.com. And as always, enjoy the outdoors.